All right, all, and welcome to. We'll go again. Let me just move my mic for a second. That is an incredible start to a stream. Sorry about that. All right, all, and welcome to our Rolex 24 Raw Before the 24 Session 1 Watch Along. If you've joined us watching back, just to let you know that there is no official live broadcast for this session. So, the best you can do is watching live timing as I am doing here. So, if you're not interested in that, leave a like and then you can click off. If you are interested, then stick around and we can see together how the first session of the 2024 IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship season has unfolded. If you don't know how we do things around here, it is a one-man show, so I am going to be very rude for half the time and be on my phone because I have a Twitter page to also keep up to date. Hello to everyone who has joined in and joined us with the stream. I'm just trying to get everything set up, so hopefully I can see timing. Ah, there we go. There we go, so now I can see timing and also the chat. Any questions you have, any predictions for the season, any point of conversation, let me know. Also, let me know how the sound is, testing a new mic. I'm a bit concerned it's a bit too close to my laptop and you'll be able to hear the fan going on that. But if that isn't an issue, let me know, or if it is an issue, I can move it. Just four minutes then until our 59 cars will take to the track for the first time this season. And it is the first debut with live timing, if that makes any sense, for the new Corvette, new Ford Mustang, new Aston Martin. They did run in the December IMSA test, but there was no public timing available for that one. So we don't really have much of an idea of how they got on. Kicking things off then with a 90 minute session this morning. Well, it is afternoon here where I am. It is morning local time in Daytona. I'm not in Daytona, as you might be able to tell. Get a grip. Hey, what's up, man? Hope you are doing well on this Friday. Looking forward to getting things underway, which should be in just a couple of minutes time. Hello to Automoto News, hope you are doing well as well. There you are, you can see the official time there, 10.57, Stathis here. Hi Stathis, hope you're doing well. And good luck for the iRacing Daytona 24 this weekend as well. I believe you're doing that. And everyone else as well who's also taking on probably the biggest mass participation sim race of the season. Certainly something I want to take part in someday. Not going to be this year though, as I don't have eye racing, so be a little late to grind the safety rating out now.
I hope Ferrari, Porsche, Lamborghini, BOP for Rolex would be better. Last year was awful. New BOP process for IMSA this year. Worth noting, they were all new cars last year and expecting new cars to be competitive on their first race is a huge ask for any sanctioning body in the world. So they will be more competitive this year with the year learning on their side as well. Hi to DTR cars. Mohammed, thoughts on the red Acura? I'll do, I'll get back to that in a second. As green flag is out, the 2024 rule before the 24 is officially underway. At least according to timing screen. It'll take a few seconds for pit to cycle through. Some interesting car number. Oh no, that's me being blind. Uh, it's the way the class numbers were merging. I was going to say we might have an issue with live timing. No, we don't. It is just me being an idiot. But what's new about that? Thoughts on the red Acura? When we saw the render of it, I was a bit concerned it looked a bit too much like the wheel and Cadillac. Now we have seen it in person. Well, in the flesh as such. I think it looks absolutely stunning. You think the blue Acura's livery is slightly improved with more blue on the cockpit? I uh, same. I kind of want to see it on track a bit more to give a full judgment. But I agree. I think a little bit of blue will be nice on there. You can see now cars emerging on track. Ricky Taylor in the 10 car. Parker Thompson in the 12. Jack Hawksworth. You've got Sheldon Vanderlinder and Nick Yellowly in the BMWs. Catherine Legg in the Gradient Racing Acura. A record number of women taking part in the race this year. And then Alec Udell in the Kelly Moss with Riley Carr. Renga van der Zander coming out in the 01 to kick the session off. Has the BOP for GTP been announced? The BOP for this weekend has been announced. But IMSA have the right to change it before the race itself. If they find anything particularly off this weekend. You see all that extra data and they'll make the most of it. Please let me know any questions, any thoughts. Let me know about the audio as well. New mic. It is, I think, picking up some of my laptop noise. So if that gets too disturbing, let me know. And I'll try my best to try and move it. Don't have too much space though, which is always a bit of a challenge. Hope you're all doing very well on this Friday. You can see new sector times starting to come in. Purple, Ferdinand Habsburg, first purple sector of the IMSA season. Well, in the LMP2 class at least, which means someone has gone quicker. Nick Yellerly is the first car, I believe, to start a flying lap in 2024. Audio sound kind of crisp, good to hear. Best looking car in each category. Now that is a great question. And in October, again, we'll have a livery contest to decide it. But that's a really good question. You might have stumped me there. Obviously, special mention has to go to Spike the Dragon and Rexy. Another great idea by AO Racing. Keeping with that theme for this year. Plenty of teams. United Autosports have had a change for this year. Which looks very nice indeed. Still waiting to see a few pictures of cars as well. You went to the Asian Le Mans series at Sepang. Loved it when the cars first got out of the pits. Couldn't stop smiling. I'll be honest, every time I end up at a sports car race, which has been way too long now, always the same effect on me. 
Rumours say Mustangs are fast in a straight line. Obviously, BOP does work to try and equalise things out, but when you look at those cars, they do look like a straight line would suit them with that glorious front-engined V8. You can see already some teams getting a bit of strategy underway. Renga van der Zander has come straight back into the pits after just doing an outlap in the 01 Cadillac racing entry. Other cars such as Antonio Garcia in the Corvette, for instance, pressing on and getting some laps under the board. Corvette racing, of course, with their new GT3 car as we get our first official times on the board. Sheldon van der Linde a 144.441, Nick Yellily a 147.4. Lap times don't mean much this early on, but it is always just nice to see. And for BMW, that's a great photo. One, two, three when you factor in the Paul Miller car as well up there. Era's livery is beautiful, I agree on that one, they've got another good one this year, they've had quite a few good ones over the season. On well, my thoughts on the Brad Pitt news, it's any exposure for sports car racing is good exposure. For anyone who has missed that, the Wright Motorsports Porsche is featuring in the unnamed Apple Brad Pitt Formula 1 film, there's going to be some kind of scene at Daytona. If I haven't heard the week in sports cars yet myself to catch up on that, but it does sound like Marshall Pruitt has an idea of what the idea is. It's Nick Tandy jumps to the top of the times in the number six Porsche or 142.2. Mikhail Jensen slots into second place. In your opinion, FQ Eagles, the best liveries, Porsche and Lambo in GTP, and the Ferrari and the McLaren in GTD. All good shouts there. The green Corvette in GTD, that is a good shout, Mohammed as well. The 17 AWA car. Always strange when a Corvette isn't yellow, but certainly they have managed to pull it off. Antonio Garcia and then Dirk Mueller goes to the top in GTD Pro. 150.616. Harry Tinknell now quick with a 148.514 the quickest time there the two Fords straight in at 1-2 at the top in the overall times Sheldon van der Linde has improved to a 139.533 still a good five seconds to find for the GTPs by the time we get to qualifying on Sunday so lap times not too important right now what's Ferrari GTD car number you have the 62 Risi Competitors only car, which Daniel Serra is currently aboard the wheel in. You have the 023 Triarsi Competitors only entry, the 47 Chetelar Racing car, the 21 AF Corsa, and the 34 Conquest Racing. As Tandy jumps back to the top now, a 38.138. I will just put a quick disclaimer out. I, I've got a very good grasp of the entry list, I think, so far, but I don't have it up at all with me. So if I do hesitate on any entries, apologies for that one in advance. Let's see, has everyone been able to get out there then? Is everyone running? So the five car, the 85 car now it is, the JDC Miller Motorsports Porsche 963 yet to take to the track. The Sun Energy 1 GTD Pro Mercedes, same story there. The Winwood Racing Mercedes and GTD Pro, no, GTD not Pro, my apologies. The PR1 Matheson Motorsports LMP2 car, we get to see that make an appearance. Andretti, Magnus and WTR Andretti and GTD. The Wheel and Engineering Cadillac, the 31 car. If I remember right, they ran into issues in this session last year. So they'll be hoping to avoid a repeat there. The defending GTD winners, the 27, the 23 car. And that is about it. The 20 high class entry as well. And Faf and Proton all yet to make an appearance out on track 
going back up to the top of the times then Colin Brown now quickest in LMP2 as Nick Tandy has just gone purple in all three sectors to lower the top time to a 135.997. Colin Brown certainly it's a shame not to see him back in GTP this year but you can imagine he's going to do very well indeed in LMP2. What are your thoughts for a customer team finish on the podium at Daytona? I think they've both got a good shot. JDC, always very good in the endurance races. Proton, they're on the podium at Petit Le Mans, so they can definitely do it again here. As always, apologies if I seem like I'm being a bit rude. I'm just trying to manage both keeping the stream up and also keeping Twitter updated so those who can't join us still are able to get some updates from this opening session. Catherine Legg has just gone quickest in GTD in the Gradient Acura. Still early times coming in with just 10 minutes into this 90 minute session. 82 degrees Fahrenheit track temperature, 73 degrees Fahrenheit air temperature. Tandy purple in the opening two sectors yet again. So we could see the six car improve even further. Hi Theo, hope you're doing well on this Friday afternoon. As Tandy does improve again to a 35.617. Nico Verone in the AWA Corvette has just jumped to quickest GT car. Overall, a 146.9 by him. Colin Brown just improved in LMP2 as well before coming into the pit lane. Whether they'll now hand over to George Kurtz, get him some early track time. Which live timings am I using? I am using Alcamel Systems. So if you go to livetiming.alcamelsystems.com slash IMSA, you should be able to access the same timing page that I am on. It's all publicly available. Any questions, any points of discussion, any predictions, please just leave them in the chat and we will get round to them. And also, just any general feedback as well. I'm not an expert at this whole streaming thing, so anything is useful. Felipe Nazza now jumping up to third in the times. Mikkel Jensen going quickest in LMP2. You can see the WTR Andretti Acuras now getting times on the board. Louis Delatraz and Ricky Taylor aboard those two cars at the moment. Currently very much just getting tyres up to temperature. Catherine Legg jumping back up to the top in GTD for gradient racing. In your opinion, Daytona penalise a bit more rear mid-engine car? I think it, it very much varies in my opinion. Sometimes it is front engine, sometimes rear, sometimes mid. Overall, BOP in 
GTD has been very good for the past few years. If you take it back a few years, for instance, Lamborghini was probably the car to have. You think TDS Racing is going to win the LMP2 class? Such a good group, very underrated this year. LMP2 is so wide open, I don't think I want to risk making any predictions on that front. But it's fair to say TDS are definitely amongst the contenders there. Is Catleg good? Catleg is very, very good indeed in my opinion. Been around at this race now for well over a decade. Made plenty of Indy 500 runs. Made the Indy 500 last year just as one example. And very quick in a GT car over the previous few seasons. Nearly won an IMSA title. Still a few improvements coming in at the top with the BMWs. Sheldon van der Linde just improved the best time of the 24 car. Era Motorsport just jumping up there into the top 5 in LMP2. And you see now most cars have gotten out on track. Still waiting on the Proton competition, Porsche 963, the number 5 car there, the Mustang sampling car, the FAF Motorsports McLaren as well, yet to emerge onto track, the MDK by High Class, number 20 LMP2, and then the Andretti Motorsports Porsche, the number 43, the 52 into Europol car, and the 85 JDC Miller Porsche, the only cars yet to head out on track then. You can see some cars after an open run now heading into the pits. Colin Brown, for instance, has just come in. Ricky Taylor coming in for his second stop of the session already. Mikhail Jensen just gone purple in sector three in the LMP2 class. You hope the Iron Dames win? They certainly have a very good chance in the GTD class. A very solid crew. The one drawback for them, and I think it's a massive shame after how good she was in quali and the start at Petit Le Mans, is Dorian Pan isn't here this weekend as she's on Formula 4 duties at Abu Dhabi. But she will join Sara Bovi, Rahel Fry, and Michelle Gatting for the race itself. And Matteo Crisoni has just jumped up to the top of the times in GTD Pro in the number 60 Iron Lynx Lamborghini. That car moving up from GTD to the Pro class rather late on, giving Iron Lynx a two car GTD Pro effort this year. It's still just been the one lap by the 01 Cadillac Racing effort and just one or two laps by the 31 Whelan Engineering car, Jack Aitken, the one who took that out for that installation run. Obviously a lot of track time at Daytona, so you don't need to be out and about from the off, but it's certainly much more reassuring, in my opinion, to get some time it's on the board straight away. Nick Tandy now into the pits in the number 6 Porsche after his solid opening run, getting a few laps on the board there. And joining him in the pits, Felipe Nazza as well in the 7 car. Both Porsche and BMW who are also now bringing cars in, van der Linde into the pits. Nick Yellerly staying out another lap. But both of them disappointing times at Daytona last year. They'll be looking to bounce back in 2024. And our Ligier LMP2 car, the Sean Creech Motorsport entry, Joel Barbosa has brought that out onto the track. So they are now turning times as well. Great to have multiple chassis back in LMP2 this year. Incident happened at turn three. I was just about to mention that. Incident at turn three A. Thanks, get a grip. Car 22 off course at turn three and continued. 
that is Paul de Resta aboard the United Autosports Orica. It was recently announced that Paul was going to be joining the European Le Mans series with United as well as well as the IMSA program. And then also he is switching over Peugeots in the WEC. He'll be driving in the 94 car in 2024. Hello to everyone who is listening in from wherever you are. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know your impressions on the first 20 minutes of running. Any questions, any predictions for this race or this season? I'm all ears. Paul DeResta will be pretty busy. He certainly will be, especially as I think he still has some Sky TV gigs as well. You can see someone has just shot up the times there. Eric Lux in the Dragon Speed entry, a late entry to this year's race. They've just got their first time on the board. And he might be the first bronze driver to set a time in LMP2 as well. Certainly, by the looks of it, that is the case. And when your bronze is going well, that's a very promising sign for the 24 hours. Car 27, pit lane speed violation, two miles an hour over the speed limit for them. That is our first penalty of the WeatherTech season, picked up by who was in the 27 car then. Ian James is the one who's just taken it out on an outlap, but we can't see who was in it when it came in. So it depends if it was in or out where it was. That's going to be a drive through penalty for them then. Jack Aitken taking the 31 Cadillac back out on track as well now. Hopefully they can get some times on the board. Aitken stepping up for a full season effort in 2024 after being part of their endurance lineup last year. Nick Yellerly still going on this opening run in the 25 BMW. Nice little long run they're putting down. Car 74 continuing slowly from turn 6 according to race control. Turn 6 is the turn onto the banking. It's Felipe Fraga at the wheel of that one at the moment. The Riley car, last year's dominant LMP3 champions, stepping up to LMP2. That's the car for anyone who's a particular Formula 1 fan as it's now flagged up as stopped officially on live timing. That is the car Felipe Massa will be getting in in the near future as he is part of their lineup for the Rolex 24. Aiken now on a flying lap but obviously a bit of a worry here if we've got a car stopped although stop doesn't necessarily mean stopped to explain how timing works stopped is essentially predicts when a car should reach a sector point and when it's particularly late, then it will flag up as officially stopped. But car 74, off course, turnway, sp speedway, turn two, according to race control. Just over 20 minutes into this opening session of the Raw. Not the start that Felipe Fraga would have been looking for. Matthew Yamane has just gotten into the number six Porsche to do the next set of running in that car. Any predictions on how Massa will fare in his LMP2 debut? It's really quite hard to tell. I'd imagine he'll do a solid job as he's tested the car and I don't think the team would want him and I don't think he'd want to be with the team if he was miles off the pace. But then it's a big ask to come in at debut when you look at even just who's in the car right now. Mikkel Jensen, Ben Hanley, Colin Brown, Paul DeResta, Ryan Dial. To be able to match those straight off the bat in LMP2 would be a huge ask for him. So my predictions are modest, I think it's fair to say. Claudio Schiavoni coming out in the number 60 Iron Lynx Lamborghini. He's one of two amateur drivers in GTD Pro this year. You've got him and then in the 75 car you have got Kenny Habul. 
Personally, I don't mind it when you have one or two amateur drivers in a GTD Pro car. We had an issue last year where a couple of cars were running lineups which were eligible for GTD and they chose to play, change class for drive time reasons. This, a bit more sensible and they're genuinely going to be bidding for the win in GTD Pro. Jack Aitken getting a time on the board then with the 31 Cadillac, a 138.041. Dane Cameron has just come out in the 7 car. Ricky Taylor has just headed out in the 10 car. Car 74 has continued on track, the Riley entry. And has recovered to the pits according to live timing. So hopefully they'll be able to get to work on fixing whatever problem caused them to ground to a halt and hopefully we'll see them again later in the session. That's always the indication of how big an issue was, especially with just over an hour to go. If we see them again, not a disaster. If we don't, they've had a problem as Paul DeResta jumps to the top of LMP2 in the number 22 United Auto Sports car, the car he's going to be sharing with Dan Goldberg for the full season. Nick Yellily has finally bought the 25 BMW in as Ferdy Habsburg in the Tower Motorsport car jumps up to second in LMP2, just 31 thousandths off Paul de Resta. And now Sheldon van der Linde heading back out in the 24 after they've spent some time in the pits. We are still yet to see the 01 car return to action. Or the 5 or the 85. So at this point I would say we've got some minor troubles out there. The Faf McLaren has at least now done an outlap as has the high class car. And Tom Dillman has just taken the into Europol LMP2 entry out. So that is now running as well for the first time. Into Europol and PR1 Matheson Motorsports reuniting. They previously paired up back in 2020 for Petit Le Mans and Sebring. Now they're together for the full season. Jack Aitken setting a personal best in Sector 2 then. Ferdy Habsburg going purple in LMP2 in the Tower Motorsports car in Sector 2. Eric Lux has moved all the way up to 4th place in LMP2 as a bronze driver. Very good going, very promising early signs for him. And speaking of moving up to 4th place, Jack Aitken has done. But we have a red flag out on circuit. Red flag with just over 26 minutes done in the session. Is anyone stopped on track? No, they are not. So... We're going to have to wait and see what this is for. Always hard to guess from first look. Just when you've got a timing screen, genuinely the indication is if someone has stopped. Debris turn four is the issue. So chances are something has fallen off a car potentially and that is needing to be retreated. But that is going to offer a little break now for the teams and be very frustrating for the inter Europoles of the world who were just getting out there to start some running. Unless we've got a red flag, might as well give a brief run down the timings of the first half an hour. According to the weather, it looks like it may be thunderstorms. Thunderstorms right now, that is an option, I suppose. I will have to get Daytona weather up. What website is this? This is livetiming.alchemalsystems.com slash IMSA. If you search IMSA Alchemal live timing, I assume the link should come up. No official broadcast for the opening sessions. So if you are wanting any kind of radio coverage, unfortunately, this is the best offer that there is out there that I can give you at least. I mean, someone else might be doing a watch along. I don't know. 
but let's quickly go over live timing then as they stand after half an hour. It's currently the number six Porsche, Nick Tandy setting that time to put them on top. Second place is Sheldon van der Linde in the number 24 BMW. Third is Nick Yellerly in the sister number 25 entry. Currently the top six in GTP all split by under a second. LMP2, it's Paul DeResta at the top of the times with a 139.916. Catherine Legg is the quickest car in GTD, a 146.289 from her. And then the quickest GTD Pro entry, the Iron Lynx Lamborghini, the second quickest GT car. It was Matteo Cressoni who put that time on the board. Lamborghini with the 19 car moving up. Now 1-2 in GTD Pro. Early days here, 51 of the 59 cars have set a time. 56 of the 59 cars have been out on track. So we are under a red flag pause here. Half an hour down in this opening 90 minute session of running at the Raw before the 24. Apologies everyone when I'm going to briefly fall silent and very clearly be on my phone. It's just managing the double act as we're getting back green, very short red flag, back green flag running. So I'm also trying to do Twitter updates whilst keeping this updated. So very much apologies about that one, but it's a one man show here. So trying to make the best of a not ideal situation. Ricky Taylor in the 10 car, the first GTP back out. Will we also see any movement? You can see Lawrence Hur in the 20 MDK by high class car. Hello to everyone watching. Hope you're all having a very good Friday wherever you are in the world or a Saturday if you are tuning in from down under or similar places, New Zealand as well. We're not gonna erode everywhere in that part of the world. Actually eight hours, you've got quite a bit of Asia and Oceania now, which has flipped over into Saturday. That's enough t uh, time zone talk, I think. When we have cars on track, Delatraz in the 40, taking that car back out, Vanderlinde back out again in the 24, Cameron back out in the seven, or Campbell, we don't know. Timing just says Cam. Either Matt Campbell or Dane Cameron are currently aboard the number seven Porsche 963. As Theo says, be sure to like the stream, everyone. Really does help me out a lot. Thank you very much. Pato Award now getting into the number two United Autosports LMP2 car. His first piece of running of this year's Raw before the 24. Obviously, everyone now has the challenge of getting back up to temperatures, little things like that. Christian Rasmussen, the defending Indy Next champion, getting into the 18 car now, taking that one out on track. Malta Jakobsen getting into the 04 of CrowdStrike Racing. Anyone else new getting behind the wheel? Obviously now it's a memory test of me trying to figure out who was behind the wheel before we got going. Tom Dillman 
now re-embarking on his run. We've got another drive through for pit lane speeding. The number 60 Iron Lynx car. It was Claudio Schiavone behind the wheel of that one when it last entered the pits. So most likely if anyone was guilty, might be him. Depends how far behind race control are on handing out their pit lane speed violation penalties. If anyone has any questions, any predictions, any thoughts on the opening half hour of running, please get in touch. Please put them in the chat so we can all have a bit of a discussion. Ricky Taylor in the 10 car, moving up to fifth place in the times then. So all seven GTPs which have set a time are now within a second of one another. Dan Goldberg now getting into the 22 United LMP2. So Paul DeRest has done the early running in that car. Systems check, make sure the baseline setup is decent. So now they can crack on with getting their bronze driver some very handy time behind the wheel. You think the Raw has a lot of track time, but it's incredible every year just how quickly it manages to fly by. Ford's looking pretty sporty early on. Yes, they are indeed. Harry Tinknell currently third quickest in GTD Pro. Fred Vervish is now in the 65 car. I think it was Dirk Mueller who did the time, which put them into fifth place. And then the GTD entry from Proton Competition, 11th in class there. But again, competitive in the times. Nick Yellowly now returning to the fray in the 25 BMW. Sorry everyone, is IMSA not working? Alessandro Zampieri, hello and welcome. IMSA does not broadcast. There is no radio broadcast, there is no TV broadcast for any sessions up until Sunday. So all we have for Saturday and Friday of the Raw is live timing. So therefore... If you want any form of radio just to listen in as you round out your working week, head into the evening, whatever time of day it is for you, your best option is, I'd like to say it's me, it might not be me, but... Half, half on topic question from Theo. Since AO Racing are not racing the WEC for the full season this year, what would you say the chances are they sneak invitations for both Spike and Rexy Fallamon? Both of them, I would say very, very small. One of them, you still have a potential chance. They're in the Asian Le Mans series, and that title comes with an automatic invitation. So certainly, if they manage to pull that one off, then I imagine we'll find them. And if they, I imagine they will also try and get through the selection committee as they have a European Le Mans series entry as well. Um, get a grip, correct. They are also broadcasting the VP challenge race tomorrow. My bad, should have clarified that one. Kevin Estra has just gotten into the number six Porsche Penske Motorsport, Porsche 963. The car which Nick Tandy put fastest at the start of the day's running. see now a bit of a cycling of drives all 13 LMP2 cars now with a competitive lap on the board Scott Huffaker in the MDK by high class car which has recently jumped up to third place 
the number seven Porsche now heading into the pits. Teams going to be doing lots of little tweaks on the car, trying to establish a setup. The 01 Cadillac finally out. Finally getting some laps on track. And you can see there, Van der Zander jumping straight up into third place in times. So it now goes Porsche BMW. BMW, as Nick Yellerly has just reclaimed his third place. And then Cadillac, Cadillac, Acura, Porsche, Acura. The two customer Porsche 963s we are yet to see out on the track. Get a grip. One thing that Ryan DL told you yesterday at Media Day was that Era would have run two cars at Daytona if it wasn't for the class maxing out. So that was kind of interesting. I definitely agree there. I know they've been looking at two cars for a little while now, but I don't think they've ever quite had the perfect opportunity. And when the grid is as full as it is, it's going to be very hard to be able to break in to run that second car. I hope everyone who's either at Daytona already or planning to go in the next few days next week for the race or for the Raw this weekend has a great time out there. Sadly, won't be me. Also, let me know if my webcam gets a little too dark as the sun is setting where I am in the world. So, lighting isn't going to be great. Still waiting on the 5 car, the 43 and the 85 to get out on track. The customer Porsche teams already at a mileage disadvantage compared to the factory cars. And this certainly won't be helping their case right now. Also the number 9, Faf McLaren. I don't think they have too many laps on the board. Marvin Kirchhoff are currently at the wheel. They are a long way off the back of the pace in the GT ranks. Just still headed by Catherine Legg's time from earlier. Tatiana Calderon now behind the wheel of the 66 car. What's the minimum drive time for bronzes in GTD and LMP2? If I remember correctly, it is four and a half hours. So you'd imagine that will be broken down into one or two hours near the start. You'd imagine most of the bronzes would do the second. Well, in LMP2, they have to start the car. In GT, they don't. But you'd imagine most of them there would take on a stint early on and then work towards some stints in the middle. But I'd be very surprised if the bronzes have any drive time left by the final four, five, six hours of the race.
Jack Aitken just popping in a personal best time then in Sector 1 in the Whelan Engineering Racing Cadillac. He's the only driver we've seen aboard that car so far. Pipo Durrani and Tom Blomqvist, the other two who you can expect to be joining them in the future. Thank you to everyone who's liking the stream and subscribing to the channel. I will have all of the news from Daytona over the next 10 days of action. And then looking ahead into the rest of the sports car season, obviously we've got Asian Le Mans series, the Bathurst 12 hour, and then all building up to the WEC season opener in Qatar. Really hope the race has some long green flag runs. So do I. Sometimes at Daytona it has felt like there's been a little too many cautions for my liking. I think it was a decade ago. Autosport nicknamed it the 24 Yellows of Daytona. Although it certainly has got better in recent years. The Triarce GTD Ferrari is the latest for a pit lane speed violation. Just a warning for them as they were over one, only one mile an hour over. Do I root for any specific teams or drivers? Not really. I can honestly say I'm pretty neutral. So it's very cliche, but as long as obviously a lot of people are going to be disappointed, but I just want a good race and a few nice stories from it. And that is all I particularly look for. Joseph Newgarden now getting into the number 7 Porsche Penske Motorsport car for his first running. Daytona is going to be his third ever IMSA race. He's with Tower Motorsports here last year. And then he was with Porsche Penske at Petit Le Mans where they were able to take a fourth place finish aboard that number 7 car. can see in LMP2 several bronze drivers now getting behind the wheel. You've got the likes of Stephen Thomas in the TDS car out there now. Lance Wilsey in the Sean Creech Ligier. Hopefully removing LMP3 improves the driving standards a bit. I would imagine we are going to get less cautions without LMP3, which... Let's be honest, was the most incident prone class, but also going from five classes to four classes should just help with less incidents. And we do have two less cars, which will only make a very small difference, but it will make a difference nonetheless. Certainly in pit road, it means everyone has a tiny, tiny bit more room, but not much of a difference, all things considered especially as we have an extra garage set up for the filming of the Apple Formula One film as well. I believe they also have an extra pit box and I wouldn't be surprised if NBC have their own pit box again this year as a part of their broadcast. If anyone's wondering out a broadcast, sorry for those who have been here since the start and I've repeated this a few times over, no broadcast until Sunday from Daytona. If you want sound or vision, that's not happening. All we have got is live timing. Kevin Estra coming into the pits then in the number six car. Haven't seen either of the WTR Andretti Cadillacs in a little while. Jack Aitken also now pitting. You feel the field quality is pretty high, hardly any duds in any class. I very much agree there. I think this might be the highest standard the race has ever been at. I think sports car racing at a whole, as Pato Award improves to 6th in LMP2, is at the best it has ever been at as well. Because the big teams are still big. They've definitely gotten bigger. But when you look at the smaller teams on the grid, if you go back a decade, the smallest team here this year is probably about 10 times the size of the smallest team in 2014. Maybe not 10 times, that might be a bit of an exaggeration, but the level of professionalism in the amateur ranks 
the last few years has been absolutely mind-boggling. have a feeling the customer teams may not go out in this practice. Certainly, given we still haven't seen them, I would imagine that might be the case. A huge shame though. Or maybe, if I were them, I'd at least emerge near the end just for a shakedown. Make sure everything is systems ready so then they can attack this evening's session. If you want updates on this evening's session, I won't be live for it because I don't want a noise complaint. But if you follow me on Twitter, it is linked in the description of this stream. And I would imagine quite a few people here follow me on Twitter anyway. I'll be doing all of the live updates there. Any questions, also throw them over to me on Twitter. Dwight Merriman has just gotten into the 18 era LMP2. The Reesey car, Daniel Serra, just emerged back from the pits. And if anyone wants an idea of just how close GTD Pro is going to be in 2024, the top three cars currently covered by 0.024 seconds. Devlin Di Francesco just emerging out on track in the Forte car. Tommy Milner in the number four Corvette, the new GT3 Corvette for 2024. The FAF McLaren has now put in a much more representative 149.79, still bottom of GTD Pro, but no longer seven seconds across the race. It's presumed that the Apex is film inclusion Alex of uh, Brad Pitt's character before he returns to F1. Alex Brundle says this is poor framing of sports car racing. I'd say it probably is. It's a not really a pivot anyone does, and certainly it doesn't help the whole F1 retirement home thing, which really isn't true these days, but still has a bit of legacy. But at the same time, that is a film which is going to reach the masses. So the exposure for IMSA, even if it's poor framing, probably outweighs the benefits of that exposure, probably outweighs the negative of how it is being portrayed. Lulu Wadu now getting out on track in the number 88, Richard Mill AF Corsa LMP2 entry. Ferrari factory driver, of course. Colton Herter now heading out in the number 40 car. Ricky Taylor heading out in the 10. It's only been Ricky so far in that number 10 entry. It was Louis Delatraz for the start in the 40. As we've clocked over halfway now, 50 minutes gone, 38 minutes to go. Only got two GTP cars out on track at the moment. If anything, track has quieted down. Just 38 cars on the circuit at the moment. Temperatures still rising at Daytona. Now 90 degrees Fahrenheit track temperature. Two miles an hour wind speed. So that's one mile an hour wind speed now. So that is definitely mitigating, which will be doing the teams some favour because it means... They know whatever they're finding, top speed wise especially, it isn't wind based. In general, stable conditions are what you want in testing, especially as it's usually not a particularly windy race, generally. Obviously how you measure particularly windy is up for debate. Good news at JDC Miller Motorsports, the 85 car, Richard Westbrook, emerging out on track at last. The banana boat back at Daytona after several years away in banana boat form, to be fair. Hopefully, we'll now see Westy rocket up the timing screens.
car 27 a pit lane speed violation penalty that is a another drive through for them i think i might be mistaken but i think they have already had a pit lane speed violation and i think it might have been another plus two so they might need to recalibrate their pit lane speed limit can see down in the GT ranks Charlie Eastwood has now gotten in the 17 AWA car his debut as a Corvette racing factory driver well a Corvette factory driver <clears throat> 35 minutes left on the clock as Tom Blomqvist heads out on track in the number 31 Whelan Engineering Cadillac, the car of the defending champions. Car 18, that's the era motorsport entry, off course at turn 3 and continued. Dwight Merriman still behind the wheel of that one. But so far, it's been a relatively clean session. The 74 car, we yet to see return after they stopped on track. But apart from that, we had the one red flag for debris. And that is it. No real incidents to speak of, which is what we like to see. Keeping things clean. Any questions, feel free to fire away. Just put them in the chat as Westy, Richard Westbrook, jumps up to ninth in GTD, GTP, sorry, in the JDC Miller car, 137.347. Just waiting on the number five Proton and the number 43 Andretti entry to join the fray now. The new Aston Martins currently running in 51st, 52nd and 57th. The Vantage GT3 Evo making its debut this weekend. Sara Bovi has just gotten into the Iron Dames Lamborghini. Indy Doncha emerging on track in the Winwood Racing Mercedes. And Augusto Farfus coming out in the 24 BMW. He is going from full-time driver to endurance cup driver in 2024 as he is going full-time in the World Endurance Championship. The left-hand side of timing doesn't appear to be showing up in the stream at the minute. Okay, it is showing up for me. So can anyone else report if they're having the same issue? Can you... Just give me a clue on what is being cut off and then I can try and fix that. Because according to what I've got, there is a space on the left, I think, but that there is no live timing there, so don't worry about that. But I can... Essentially, it is too small of a cutoff for me to do. So if I go like that, actually, then you can actually see a bit more. But there you go. That is the size of the full timing screen. Please, people, also let me know about the sound of my laptop fan. I know that's a pretty minor issue, you'd imagine. But I am aware my microphone is probably picking up on it. So if it is getting too annoying, just let me know. Renga van der Zander returning to the track in the 01 Cadillac. Westbrook has improved in the JDC Miller car. Never mind, didn't see the cutoff. No worry, Theo. It did. I'll be honest, it did look like I was cutting something off there. Forty-four cars out on track now. Then 
43 just a constantly changing number ticking over as everyone gets on with their run plans in the opening session for some teams say the 10 crew the focus has clearly been on working on the early setup ricky taylor has done all of the running in that car and they've just been chipping away every time in the pits making a few tweaks is it better is it worse other teams like the 01 cadillac seem to have faced some issues some longer holds in pit lane but they are now back out and running and then the likes of the number six porsche penske car they are cycling through their drivers by the looks of it we've already seen three different drivers in that car and the same for the number seven so they're getting all their drivers up to speed back in the rhythm of daytona but at the end of the day, everyone will be very thankful that we've only had one small break thanks to a red flag. And it is helping them keep up with their plan. As plans are always broken during testing, but so far it's so good. Roman Grosjean heading out in the number 60, Iron Lynx Lamborghini. Frankie Monte Calvo in the number 12, Vassar Sullivan Lexus. Trent Hinman in the 92. Kelly Moss with Riley Carr. Robbie Foley in the 96 Turner BMW. All getting some running in. One hour complete now. 30 minutes to go. Of this opening session of running at the Raw before the 24 for the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship class. How is... You know what? To say it is now dark out, my webcam is actually holding up all right, which is quite nice to see, as I was thinking you wouldn't be able to make me out at all. You see teams just working through tempo right now. Renga van der Zander actually with two personal bests in the opening two sectors on this lap. Hi to Calibra, hope you're doing all right. No improvement though overall from van der Zander. In the end it was a slower third sector, so no improvement there. Currently four cars below the 136 mark in GTP. Both BMWs, one Porsche and one Cadillac. But nine cars, all nine that have been out on track, are below the 137 line. Colton Herta now heading into the pits in the number 40 WTR and Dretti entry. Should we expect Jordan Taylor to need some time to readjust to prototype racing or do you think he'll be on the pace immediately? I think he'll need a little bit of a tiny bit of adjustment but I don't think it's going to be huge. Like I don't think it'll be a notable oh Jordan's off the pace but he will be quicker and he'll be noticeably quicker at Laguna Seca. But there will be that little 0.001% where he just has to get back in the rhythm of being a top class car again. EDM Energy, is the quality format the same as last year? Yes, it is. So at 1.55pm Eastern on Sunday, qualifying takes place. The GT cars have a 15 minute session. The LMP2 cars then have a 15 minute session. The GTP cars then have a 15 minute session which will decide our pole sitter and then they get a week to focus on race prep before the green flag next Saturday the 27th. As now Lawrence Van Tor heads out in the number 6 car. So that will make it all four drivers aboard that number 6 crew to have had a taste of running in the opening session. And then you compare that to some of their GTP rivals who have only run one driver.
We've got a new driver behind the wheel of the 22 United car, Bijoy Garg. He is their silver driver and he is getting his first running of the session. Paul de Resta put them to the top of the times. Renga van der Zander has now headed into the pits. Twenty-five minutes still on the clock then. Anyone lighting up the timing screen? Yes, they are. Actually, no, that's because they're in the pits. My bad. Ignore that. Got all excited then over nothing. But Trent Hinman did just set a personal best in the final sector in the Kelly Moss with Riley Porsche. Still no sign of the 5 or 33, which is an awful shame for them. Always nice to see all the cars running in the opening session. But for now, we're entering a quieter period. Everyone just ticking over laps, getting the laps in. Getting any tweaks which are needed done. John Ferrano heading out on track in the number 8 Tower Motorsports entry. John returning from injury after having to miss most of the 2023 season after an incident at Laguna Seca. So in many ways, this is a title defence for Tower Motorsports and John Ferrano because they didn't really get a fair shot at it last year given their defence was over halfway through the second points round. Have to say, given we've had years of four or five cars in LMP2 at Daytona, very nice to see that 13 car grid this year. Mike Rockefeller now behind the wheel of the number 60 Ford, Ford Multimatic Motorsports Century. That was Harry Tinknell quite a bit early on in the session. Anders Fjordback heading out in the ATC MDK Motorsports Porsche. Mauro Engel in the 75 Sun Energy 1 Mercedes. But we are back to just three GT, and just as I say that, we are up to four GTP cars on track as Alex Pillow, the dominant IndyCar champion last year, joins the fray for his return to the Rolex, wasn't here last year, was in the race in 2022 where they ended up 7th in class. He's in the 01, it's the top 4 in times who are out on track at the moment and Nick Yellowly starting to improve slightly in sector number 3 last time around. He's in the 25 BMW, Augusto Farfus in the 24 Beamer, and Lawrence Vantor is in the number six Porsche, which leads the way after an early flyer from Nick Tandy. Richard Westbrook re emerging in the 85 JDC Miller car. Ben Keating now out on track in the number two United Autosports entry. Ben, the only driver doing double duty this year. He's also going to be in the 85 JDC Miller Porsche in GTP. Colton Herter returning to the track now in the number 40 WTR Andretti entry. I know that car very fancied by many in its lovely red Dex imaging livery. Hunter McElroy 
now behind the wheel of the 11 for the first time today I believe Mike Conway heading out on track in the Vassa Sullivan Lexus the defending GTD Pro champions as we have a red flag out on track good spot Nick Suff thank you for that one incident at turn 5 no one stopped on track. Car 20 spun at turn 5. Car 20, Dennis Anderson. That's the MDK by High Class Racing Car. Anderson, bronze driver in that one. He's going to be sharing with Seth Lucas for the full season. So this is our second red flag delay. And sadly, this one sounds like it might be a little more severe. Turn 5 is the Western Horseshoe, just to try and put that one on the map, or at least I would class it as the Western Horseshoe. Corn numbers at Daytona are interesting, which is why for the second half of the lap they tend to resort to Oval Turn 2, Speedway Turn 3 for instance. So that's our second LMP2 car to run into trouble. The 74, we haven't seen re-emerge since that had to limp back with Felipe Fraga behind the wheel. So with 20 minutes to go then, we are under delay, under red flag conditions. Everyone returning to pit lane. which seems like a good excuse to have another run through the times. But whilst to do that, please, any questions, any thoughts, any feedback, anything really you want to put in the chat, let's use the red flag to spark the conversation. After all, I assume everyone here is a sports car fan, so we all have a common interest. Let's talk about it. But our timings then with 20 minutes to go. It's the number six Porsche, Nick Tandy, the one setting the time to put them fastest, a 135.617. Second place, Sheldon van der Linde setting the time in the 24 BMW at 1 1.21 tenths of a second back. Nick Yellerly in the 25 Beamer is in third place. Fourth place, Renga van der Zande in the 01 Cadillac. Fifth, Jack Aitken in the 31 Whelan Cadillac. Then it's Jordan Taylor in the 10 car, Joseph Newgarden in the 7 Porsche. But if I remember right, it wasn't Joseph which set the time in that one. Then you have the 40 WTR Andretti Acura, all of the top 8 within a second. And then Richard Westbrook sitting 9th. And in 10th place, yet to set a time in GTP is the number five Proton competition car. You can see all the way down there in 58th overall. In LMP2, it's United Autosports for their full season IMSA debut, who are at the top, Paul De Resta, who did the business with that one. Ferdinand Habsburg put Tower Motorsports second on the timesheets at 31 thousandths back. And then 85 thousandths back is the AF Corsa car, which was Nicholas Nielsen setting the time in that one. All 13 LMP2 cars split by just 1.826 seconds. It is early days, lap times don't mean much. What lap times do mean is interest and publicity. After all, we're only talking about the top ones here. And we're talking about them much more than the ones who are lower down. In the GT ranks is Catherine Legg's early flyer. Over half a second clear of the rest of the GT field. In the gradient racing Acura. As we have green flag track conditions are clear and back underway for a final sprint to the flag. Hopefully going to finish this rundown. Second in GT, fastest GTD Pro, it's Matteo Crossoni who set the time for Iron Lynx in their Lamborghini. Then it is the AWA Corvette, Nico Verone, I believe, put that car up there. 
the Corvette on its world debut. Second in GTD Pro, the number 19 Lambo, and then the Risi Ferrari, and then the Chetelar Racing Ferrari, third in GTD. Ford, their quickest car, fourth in GTD Pro at the moment, Harry Tinknell doing the duties there. And the Aston Martin, the other new car in 2024. Nicky Team has put them 16th in GTD for Magnus Racing. 46th overall, but within a second of second place. So if you ignore Legs Flyer from the equation, then that puts them within a second of the pace, which is all you really need to be at the moment. What happened to the Proton 963? I'll be honest, Ida, not too sure yet. Hopefully, we'll be able to get to the bottom of it after the session, but certainly not a great start to proceedings for them. And since United Autosports have one guaranteed Le Mans LMB2 invite this year, do you think either Ben Keating will look to get himself in either that car or a potential second car? I would be shocked if Keating wasn't in a United entry at Le Mans. He made it explicitly clear when he was joining the team that part of his reasoning for doing so would be that he would have an entry at Le Mans and they were the most likely ones to be able to deliver him an entry. So if they have an entry and don't use him, that would be very odd indeed. Pipo Durrani getting out on track for the first time in this session then, aboard the number 31 Whelan Cadillac. Five GTP cars out on track at the moment. Make that six as the BMW number 24 Augusto Farfus returns to the fray. So far, the number six Porsche has cycled through all four drivers. We've had two drives in the 24, just Yellowly in the 25, two in the 01, all three in the 31. The 31 car, the only one in GTP this year, running just three drivers. Something which will be outlawed from next year. Every team will have to have four people behind the wheel. Only been Ricky Taylor in the 10. The number seven car we believe has had three drivers, but it might be four because two of their drivers have the same three letter acronym, which makes things a little difficult. Richard Westbrook, the only one in the 85, and he has just set a personal best in sector two. And then the number 40 car, uh, we Colton Herter and Louis Delatraz have driven in that one. Yet to see the birthday boy, Jensen Button, get behind the wheel there. Fred Vervish just set a new best sector one in the number 65 Ford. Down in the GT ranks, Alessandro Bolzan in the Conquest racing car, improving in sector two as well. Roman De Angelis also improving in sector two in the number 27, Aston Martin. And Westbrook did improve on that lap to move to a 1.36.8. 51 cars out on track at the moment as Colton Herter sets a new personal best for the 40 car in Sector 1. And Brendan Hartley heads out in the number 10 car for the first time. That WTR Andretti Acura. Just want to say thank you to everyone joining the stream. No broadcast from IMSA up until Sunday. So all we have is live timing to go off. If please leave a like, subscribe if you want for all the updates throughout Daytona and get involved in the chat. I know some of you might be working or just not want to, or whatever reason you don't have to, but we all have a common interest in sports cars here. So a bit of conversation never goes amiss. Herta unable to follow that up with an improvement in sector two though. So it doesn't look like the 40 car is going to be able to move forward in the timesheets. Currently, Tandy still holding the best sector one and the best sector two, but it's BMW and Sheldon van der Linde with the quickest time in sector three so far. 
but you can see how much time is left on the board. That sector half a second quicker than Tandy's best. Incident at turn five according to race control. Hopefully won't be anything too much. Certainly no further message. No one stopped on track. So hopefully that was just the case of someone running off wide there. Car 66 off course turn 5. That's the gradient racing Acura. It was Sheena Monk behind the wheel. It still is Sheena Monk. That car currently quickest in the GT ranks. But hopefully they will be able to resume. Yes, they have. Car 66 continued. Augusto Farfus sets a PB in sector 1. A 23.1 but he then might have entered a yellow flag caused by Sheena Monk. So chances are, if he has done that, this lap won't be a huge improvement for them. And it was very briefly listed as stop there, but that is nothing to worry about with the 66. Oliver Jarvis now heading out on track in the number 9 FAF Motorsports McLaren. That car, his new full season home. Robbie Foley has just set a personal best for the Turner Motorsport BMW in Sector 3. Currently Lamborghini quickest in GTD Pro in the opening two sectors. It's Ferrari quickest in GT in sector three. No improvement from, no it was an improvement from Farfus on that lap. I think I take that back. The gap down to 0.035 seconds at the top of the times. Matthew Vaxivier heading out on track in the number 88 AF Corsa LMP2. Vaxivier Alpine Hypercar factory driver for 2024. And we've just seen an improvement there from Colton Herter to move up to 6th place in the times. As Timon van der Helm heads out in a top class prototype at Daytona for the first time. He's in the number 85 JDC Miller Motorsports Porsche. Impressed a lot of people in their part season last season. Currently, it's all but the Porsches and the Proton Porsches, which are out on track in GTP, as we have just eight minutes to go. Theo, in past interviews, said the way and other drivers have expressed interest in taking the GRO 10 to Daytona. Um, what would it take to see it there? At the end of the day, it all comes down to a couple of things. One, budget on Toyota's side. And the 88 has a pit lane speed violation warning for being one miles an hour over. So on their side, they need to see the benefit of doing Daytona because it's an expensive race to do. And Toyota, their budget isn't as big as everyone thinks it is, and even stuff like the IMSA homologation as well. And on the other side, from IMSA's standpoint, you have a heavily oversubscribed race. So say Toyota want to come here with two cars, that would mean you'd have to get rid of two other cars. And for the most part, you'd think fine, but every car here is doing the at least the endurance cup rounds. So you're going to have some unhappy customers if their full season program gets rejected to make room for Toyota to just do Daytona. So those are the two challenges going on there. Felix Rosenqvist has just gotten into the number 22 United Auto Sports car. Van der Helm ducking right straight back into the pit lane. Aboard the number 85. Sheena Monk headed back into the pits after her little off at turn 5. Clearly nothing particularly damaged with the 66 Acura though. As she is headed back out onto the circuit. 
Robbie Foley really is setting in the personal best sectors. Down 53rd overall, 21st in GTD. And good news, Proton competition fans, as Neil Yarny has taken the car out for an installation lap. So at least that is one lap on the board for the Mustang sampling number five. Whether we see them out again for a couple of more laps at the end of the session, we'll have to wait and see. But at least that proves the car is alive and well. Just, <clears throat> just five minutes still on the clock here at Daytona. For the opening session of the Raw Before the 24, we have six practice sessions coming up this weekend and qualifying for the Rolex 24 itself. The next session after this one is at 4.15 local time, which is 9.15pm UTC. And that is a one hour, 45 minute session, but it's a split session. So the first 15 minutes reserved for LMP2 and GTD. Then you have one hour, 15 for all four classes. And then the last 15 minutes is just for GTP and GTD Pro. Scott McLaughlin now on an outlap in the number eight tower motorsports car. Scotty Mack, great last year in that LMP2 effort. Good to see him back for Daytona. Andrea Caldarelli taking the number 19 Iron Lynx Lamborghini out onto the circuit. Fred Makovecki in the number 120 Wright Motorsports car. That is the car which is filming with the Brad Pitt Apple movie this weekend. There's actually plenty of cars mocked up to look like that one in the paddock. They actually got track running at Daytona underway yesterday as they had a private filming session last night. But the race teams for all of those cars being kept very much away from it. It is Pat Long, at least his name's on the side of the car. So I would assume he is the one doing the running. Augusto Farfus has brought the 24 car back into pit lane then. Just three minutes on the clock. We might not see them again. Phil Labart Toyota also spends a lot of money on racing in the USA between NASCAR, drag racing, and off-road racing. Not sure they will feel it's worth it unless they drop out of other US series. That is also a very good point. Doing Daytona would probably market to Europe and the rest of the world more than particularly targeting the American audience because they have incredible involvement in motorsport worldwide, Toyota actually. And they deserve all the plaudits for that because it's companies like Toyota. I don't know if anyone saw Ford Performance's launch yesterday, but Ford are making another push in motorsport. You need these passionate companies really to keep things alive and ticking. Neil Yarny heading out on another lap then aboard the number five. So they have decided to continue their shakedown runs. As well, at the top of the times, you can see sectors generally varying. 46 cars out on track right now. So the GTPs are going to be constantly in countering traffic. As it's 3.56 miles, the Daytona road course. Car 32 continuing slowly from turn 7. That is the caught off Preston Motorsports entry. And that is now listed as stopped in the final sector. Mike Skeen behind the wheel of that one. Currently 15th in class in time. They are one of the many, many teams with a new livery. And unfortunately, if that brings out a red flag or even a caution, that might be enough to end the session here with just 1 minute 40 left on the clock. Everyone just banking their final runs. I did mention this earlier, but for anyone who missed it, if timing says stop, it doesn't necessarily mean stop. It just means the car is going so slowly that 
essentially timing looks at your former sector times predicts the time you should reach a new timing point and if you are significantly slower than that time it will list you as stopped. Mark White Leg, hope you are doing well, don't think Toyota is bothered as long as they have the GT3 gig they're happy, that is another good point. Hey to you Mark, hope you are doing well. Have to say, Toyota's number one fan or certainly a contender for it. Entering the final 30 seconds now of the session. Under one minute to go. Overall, it's been a pretty solid start for most teams, I would imagine. Not great for Proton, Riley, the ones who have ran into troubles. But overall, we've only had two small red flags. And I think most teams will take that because for the most part, it seems like quite a few of them have followed what I assume they would have wanted their run plan to be. Checkered flag is out now. Theo, I'll get to your question in a minute once we have seen everyone across the line. Scott McLaughlin amongst the first to take the checkered flag then to complete this session. I will say, as I assume a few of you will be hopping off now, we will stay around to run through the results and then I'll answer any questions. But thank you everyone so much for joining. We will be live for sessions tomorrow as well. Not tonight because I will get a noise complaint as you might be able to tell by the brightness in my room. But I am not in sunny Florida right now. But if you do want updates on session two, my Twitter is linked in the description and I will be providing them all there. There you go, number 60 crossing the line. Matteo Cairoli, new Lamborghini factory driver, taking that one to the finish in this session. They will end GTD Pro on top without a very surprise time to bring it home. Neil Yarny might be about to set a time actually. Won't be the quickest time we have seen in the number 5 actually, but still waiting on him to cross the line. Try and move them up from 58th on the timesheets. We're also waiting on Alessandro Bolzan yet to cross the line in the number 34 Conquest Racing entry. And there you go, Yarni does jump up to the back of the prototype. So 144.688, not great for Proton but I think they'll be happy just to have got some running in. And as Theo says everyone, please like the stream. It probably won't mean much to you. Obviously, if you haven't liked it, don't like it. But stuff like that does actually matter to me. It is things I look at. And also the algorithm looks at it as well. The pesky YouTube algorithm. But that is all 58 cars which have took part in this session across the line. So we can safely say that Nick Tandy and Porsche Penske Motorsport will end the opening session of the 2024 IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship at the top of the timesheets a 135.61 seconds. Second and third for BMW M Team RLL car 24 from 25, Cadillac Racing in fourth, Wheel and Engineering Cadillac fifth, WTR Andretti sixth and seventh for their first time in 16 years, I believe it is, running two prototypes at Daytona. Last car within a second, just six tenths back, the number seven Porsche Penske entry. And then the JDC Miller car in ninth place, the Proton Porsche rounding out the top ten. As Alessio Garofoli says, 35s are good times. Currently, I would predict the pole range to be in the 33s, but we'll have to see what track conditions are like on Sunday. LMP2, Paul DeResta did the business for United Auto Sports USA. 139.916 for them. Within a tenth of a second, though, you found both Ferdinand Habsburg in the tower car and Nicholas Nielsen in the Richard Mill AF Corsa entry. MDK by High Class fourth there. They bought out one of the red flags. 
with an off for Dennis Anderson. And then Dragon Speed ending up rounding out the top five in LMP2. The Sean Creech Ligier, the only Ligier in the army of Oricas, ends 11th in class, one second off the ultimate pace, but only half a second off fourth. In the GT ranks then to round it out, it was Catherine Legg with the early flyer to go over half a second quicker than the rest of the field for Gradient Racing. Great time by her, a 146.289. Second in GT was the number 60 car, which was Matteo Crisoni setting that time to put them top of GTD Pro, Iron Links and Lamborghini. It was Nico Verone in third in GT with the AWA Corvette, the quickest of the brand new Corvettes. Then you have the second Iron Links GTD Pro car. Top Ferrari was the Risi Competizoni entry. And then Fred Vavish jumping up late for fourth in GTD Pro for Multimatic Motorsports. Fourth and fifth for Ford on their return to IMSA competition. Sandwiching them or in the Ford sandwich was the number 47 Chetelar Racing Ferrari. The Ferrari so far looking much more competitive than last year. Scrolling further down then, you will find the top of the factory Pratt Miller Corvettes, 7th in GTD Pro and 8th in GTD Pro for the second car. Only 7 tenths down of the quickest time in GTD Pro. In the end, if you take Cat Legs' incredible lap out of it, you are looking at going all the way down to 49th place. That is 26 GT cars within a second of one another. Very reassuring form then. The 32 car stopped on track at the end. They ended it 15th in times just ahead of the Proton Ford. And then in 17th in GTD, we find the top of the brand new Evo Aston Martins, the Magnus Racing entry. And then at the bottom, a couple of cars which have had a few issues. Faf Motorsports took them a while to get going with pace. They end up in 57th overall. And then right at the very bottom of the times, it's the Andretti Motorsports Porsche, which did not go out on track at all. Clearly a problem up for them. We're going to have to try and find what that is before we get going again later this evening. And certainly they'll be desperate to get going for some evening running. So if you have any quick questions, please throw them in the chat before I close this off. I'll just get quickly to them. Theo, speaking of current WC only cars chance of coming to IMSA. Does the privateer AF Corsa 499P increase the chance of Reese competitors only getting a customer car in the next few years? I wouldn't particularly say so because part of the issue for Reese is the funding of it and that AF Corsa car, however people much want to debate the privateer aspect of it, it is being, from what I can gather, funded completely separately to the works programme. So Reese would have to find a lot of money, you're thinking millions of dollars, if they wanted to switch from GTD Pro to up to GTP. And as Mark said, I'd love to see AF Corsa though give a crack at Daytona in GTP. Unlike Toyota, they wouldn't have the issues of needing to meet IMSA's manufacturer commitments. So I'd say Ferrari would be more welcome than Toyota just to slide in for a one-off. And that is where I'm going to leave it then. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining me for, for test session one. Test session two gets underway in, let's do the maths on this, three and a half hours for a one hour, 45 minute evening session. For that one, Still no live broadcast. Broadcast doesn't begin Sunday, but I will be doing live text updates over on my Twitter account, which is linked in the description. And then we will be back here with the streams for 
session three, which takes place tomorrow afternoon. Hope everyone has a good evening, morning, afternoon, day, wherever you are in the world. And it's fair.